Hi, my name is Adrian. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at Apple, and today I'm going to talk about how to design a debugging story for macros in modern programming languages. We'll start by exploring what's commonly understood by a macro. So many, if not most, programming languages offer some kind of mechanism to automatically generate source code. One way to categorize these various solutions is to look at how closely they are integrated with the source language itself. An extreme case here is the C preprocessor. It defines a language that's completely separate from C and can even be implemented in a separate tool uh, that preprocesses source code and runs outside of the compiler. Uh, and because it can be used standalone, it's even used by some programming languages other than C that lack some macro system of their own. Most modern compilers like Clang blur the lines though and integrates the preprocessor directly into the Lexa. The C preprocessor offers simple parameterized text replacements and handles the inclusion of other source files. But don't be fooled, despite its simplicity, the C preprocessor has proven to be an exceptionally useful tool. Here's an example from Clang itself to illustrate its power, where we uh, include a file full of definitions, stringify them, and then inside of a macro generate this uh, switch statement. And uh, the LVM project is full of these creative uses of the preprocessor. On the very other end of the spectrum, uh, the most mind-blowing example I've come across so far is the fourth language. Uh, fourth grammar is very simple. It's a sequence of words. Uh, and uh, there is a, a word called immediate uh, that basically tells the compiler to execute the, next, the previous word immediately rather than compiling it. Uh, and it's used to define many other keywords in the language. Uh, for example, this is the definition of the begin word in fourth. So we can't really call this a macro anymore. Maybe metaprogramming would be more uh, appropriate. Swift macros are the running example I'm going to use throughout this talk. And they're somewhere in the middle. Uh, like C macros, they can be defined and expanded with parameters. Uh, but they're also very deeply integrated into the language's type system. They're meant to be implemented in Swift, but really they are compiler plugins. And uh, these compiler plugins take type-checked ASTs or abstract syntax trees as inputs and return new ASTs as outputs. We'll explore what all of this means later on. But we wanted to talk about debuggers. So let's start with something that will be familiar to most of you, the C preprocessor macros. And let's explore what they mean for the debugging experience. We'll start by looking at the most basic of debug information, source locations. C preprocessor macros have a peculiar design restriction um, that's both specified in the C standard and also kind of unavoidable. They're expanded onto a single line. And if we want to be pedantic, and in a room full of compiler engineers, so of course we're going to be pedantic, in a modern program uh, compiler with an integrated preprocessor, they're expanded onto a single character. And that's necessary because there could be more than one macro invocation per line, and the source locations of the original file must still remain unambiguous. So for debugging, that means that everything that happens in a macro stays in a macro. For example, uh, here in this code, uh, there's a crash happening inside of a nested macro, this uh, assert macro that's wrapped in this assert end. And, uh, if we uh, were to like uh, look at this in the debugger and create a backtrace, uh, the debugger can't tell us anything about that because as far as it's concerned, uh, this entire chain of macro expansions have been expanded onto line 10, column 3. And that also means that stepping into the macro isn't possible, or at least it does not do what the user expects. Then debuggers usually also offer a way to evaluate expressions in the source language. The dwarf standard specifies a way to capture all macro expansions in a source file in the debug info, and that allows a debugger to theoretically re-expand the source file and make all the macro definitions available in expressions. LDB does not actually support this at the moment, but there's no technical reason for it not to. Uh, the reason why LDB doesn't support it is because it uh, can also find macros in uh, Clang modules, and that's in some ways a preferred way of doing it. But yeah, if you're curious, this is what the uh, dwarf uh, representation of, of, of macros looks like. Now let's switch gears and talk about Swift macros. 
a freestanding Swift macro, and that's the kind of macro that looks most like a C preprocessor macro, consists of three parts. There is a strongly typed declaration that tells the type checker where and with what parameters it's legal to invoke that macro in the source code. And this is what guarantees the type safety of Swift macros. Then there's the implementation, which is usually done in Swift itself using libswift syntax. And uh, that implementation is being compiled into a separate dilib or executable that is run by the compiler at compile time to expand the macro. And then finally, there is the macro expansion site, which is how a macro is used in the source code. And macro expansions are marked with the hash uh, character, so they're easily identifiable from looking at source code. Because of how Swift macros are compiler plugins, it's not just possible to replay them in the debugger. The machine running the debugger might be at a completely different architecture than the compiler plugin was compiled for, or the macro could be doing something unsavory, like return the time of the day. So we really want to capture the full text of each macro expansion at compile time. In the Swift 5.9 compiler, where macros were first introduced, uh, we solved this by writing each macro expansion to disk into a temporary file, which works good enough for local debugging, but if you think you're, for example, if you're having a build server, then these ephemeral temporary files would be lost on that machine. So to capture the macro expansions, we instead uh, are using a dwarf extension that's been proposed for dwarf six that allows to embed source code into the debug info directly. And uh, this way uh, we can preserve the original macro expansion. Of course, we also implemented support for this embedded source file dwarf extension uh, in LDB. And you might now ask what that means for the clients of LDB. What about an IDE or an existing script? Uh, do they all need to be updated in order to support this new feature? No. Uh, when LDB encounters an embedded source file in the debug info, it will produce a temporary file on disk and hand that out via the API. And this way, the feature is entirely transparent to IDEs and scripts and just works out of the box. When I talked about C macros, I mentioned that the lack of source locations makes it impossible to step into a macro. For Swift macros, we fixed this problem by representing each macro expansion as an inline function. This way, a programmer can choose whether they want to step into or over a macro. And uh, backtraces also just work uh, even for recursive macro expansion. So here, for example, uh, we're in Swift code, um, a fatal division by zero occurred. And if in, in the debugger, we can now just go up a frame and it will tell us uh, that this is actually the expansion of a macro here on line five. And it behaves just like a function call that was inlined. Um, the fact that macros are compiler plugins creates some interesting challenges for LDB's expression evaluator. LDB's, um, sorry. Uh, LDB's embedded Swift compiler can load macros. But what if a macro implementation crashes? Uh, what if it's for an older Swift version with a different ABI? We solved this problem by running all macros through the appropriate Swift plugin server that ships with the toolchain that's compatible with the plugins. This both isolates the process running the macro and fixes the ABI incompatibility problem. That's all I have for you today. We looked at how to implement a rich debugging story for macros in modern programming languages using Swift macros as an example. I highlighted how we can improve source locations by treating macros as inline functions. I showed how to use an upcoming dwarf feature to get a stable representation of macro expansions to debug in for consumers. And I showed how we make compiler plugins available in LDB. I'd be excited if somebody from the community were to try and represent C macros in Clang as inline functions as well. Thank you. <laughs>